<clears throat> the presentation time will be 30 minutes, followed by a 10 minute question and answer session. Please give a warm welcome to Meme. So I will start my presentation with an overview of uh, what we'll go through today. So first I'll introduce uh, some of the concepts for lead building and energy eff efficacy in uh, building and construction industry. Uh, so I know some people are might not be that uh, familiar with this, so that's why I will include this part. And then I will present the objectives for my study. After that, I will describe the objectives and um, I will uh, describe the data processing uh, process that I followed uh, for early data analysis and visualization, and I'll explain my selection of algorithms. Then we will do the result discussions and the limitation discussions for my study, and after that we will move on to the Q&A session. So let's begin. So uh, what is LEAD? The definition for LEAD is essentially Leadership in Energy and Environment Design, uh, LEAD. Uh, this is a rating uh, system developed by the U.S. Green Building Council, which is called USGBC, and uh, this claims to combat the increasing carbon footprint of buildings and certifies the one with superior energy consumption performance. This talk presents a Python-led uh, data-driven analysis to determine whether LEED-certified buildings have reduced carbon footprint as claimed and test the validity of the LEED rating system. LEED rating system to combat the negative environmental impact and recognize buildings with superior performance in several areas, including energy consumption, by awarding them a certificate. And despite that predictive uh, physical and data-driven models for energy consumption currently exist, um, I have seen that there is a need to evaluate the actual benefit for ob obtaining a LEED certificate in terms of energy savings and to justify the cost associated with the certificate. The building, um, uh, the building industry has presented a huge negative impact on the environment, uh, with the highest share uh, of this sector is responsible for 35% of the total energy consumption and 38% of the total greenhouse gas emissions, which is a very big deal for uh, climate change, um, if I uh, just round it out. So the distance from the net zero emission goal is only increasing year by year, so the construction industry is expected to double its activity to accommodate this new population with population growth. So this is where my problem statement comes in. According to the U.S. Uh, Building Green Council, the lead certified buildings can save a lot of money. And they sometimes claim that uh, compared to non-lead buildings, the certified buildings will save about 35% more energy and GHG. So uh, that's why uh, I think uh, as a researcher or as a engineer, everyone needs to question whether this is actually true and does the data that we have seen up until now supports that. And today I'll, uh, I'll show you how I have done that using Python. So uh, to reach the aforementioned goal, um, I have uh, uh, collaborated like five main objectives. The objective one is finding the correlation between LEED certified buildings achieved LEED score and the building's energy and GAG attributes. The second objective is comparing the LEED certified buildings in terms of energy and GAG savings and compare them to non-LEED certified buildings with similar attributes. The objective three is analyzing the impact of LEED score as an attribute to predict the energy use intensity, which is called EUI for LEED certified buildings. And the objective four is predicting the LEED score for non-LEED certified buildings. Uh, this step is done for um, um, overcoming the fact that we don't have that many valid data points. And this is something I'll explain later in my presentation. And the final objective is training a predictive model to predict the EUI, um, energy user uh, intensity, when the model is trained on the complete building data set, lead plus non-lead, and analyze the impact of lead score on the predictive performance. So uh, then I've, uh, I'm going to introduce the data sets that I have used for uh, these par particular um, objectives. Um, and I have used the cross-industry process for data mining, which is also called CRISPDM. And the five steps for CRISPDMs were followed to enable the outcome of this work to contribute to existing knowledge. 
and uh, um, these steps uh, will be described uh, as below. The first step is obviously understanding the data sets. Um, the first data set I have used is USGBC lead building directory. Um, this one gave us the building address, lead certification level, total lead score, the floor area. And this data set involved like uh, some 166,000 data points and it had about 21 attributes. The next one I used is NYC energy and water data and uh, this one was for the year 2021, uh, sorry, the year 2020. And uh, this one gave, um, gave us the uh, 28,000 building data of buildings over 25,000 square feet and the city owned buildings of over 10,000 10, square feet. And the attributes mainly involved the energy use intensity, energy use uses for each source, GHG emission, and these will work as our uh, target points mainly. And the score breakdown for the New York LEED certified buildings. This data set is our third data set. And this includes about 696 data points and 44 attributes, which includes the LEED certified uh, certification level, the total LEED score, the LEED score breakdown, etc. And this um, essentially was a data set that was completely created by using uh, sc scraping the USGBC LEED website using the Python library Beautiful Soup version 4.11.0. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a library that essentially pulls a data out of HTML and XML files. So uh, these are our three main uh, data, uh, data sets that formed our data warehouse and the description for these data sets are on the slide. And there are some attributes that I have found that uh, needs a bit more explanation. So this is also included in the slide. Um, if this is available, if this um, slideshow is available in the future, you can uh, look through this. So next, we will look for the data preparation for um, beginning our um, like exploration of the data and how we tackled our objectives. To prepare the data for this study, in the first step, uh, the USGBC and NYC open building data sets were used. And based on the building's addresses, 697 buildings were identified as existing on both data sets. So lead certification subscores of these uh, 697 buildings were then added from the third data set using Beautiful Soap. As a result, uh, two data sets were obtained. Um, the first one was a data set with 697 data points for lead certified buildings. And the second one was a 28,000 um, data points for non-lead buildings, which includes all of the building attributes. This process is visualized um, in the slide for the process um, uh, and the pandas uh, library was used, which was a major um, uh, data analysis library. For the second step of the data preparation process, the above mentioned data sets went through some cleaning. And this was also done with the help of pandas. And based on the domain knowledge, first the redundant attributes were omitted and the most uh, relevant attributes were shortlisted. And uh, then we went through the process of uh, removing data points with missing UI. And then we replaced some missing values. I'll describe what was done here. Since the UI was a crucial factor in this study, data points with no recorded UI were removed. And next comes replacing the missing values with the help of pandas. In this stage, um, data points with missing energy star scores were replaced by their mean. Missing weather normalized site UI were replaced by their average difference with the actual UI. And missing GHG emission were replaced with the average GHG per source energy use. And the missing natural gas values were replaced with zero. Um, in the next stage, some changes were made to the data type's property parking. And uh, the data type was changed into Boolean. And the primary property type were clustered into three main categories, which are institutional, residential, and office slash industrial. In the last stage, the outliers were removed from the data sets um, on the interquartile range, essentially. So that gave us our main uh, two data sets that we'll use for all of our objectives. So here are some initial um, uh, data visualization. Uh, this was done using the Seaborn, um, which is a library for making statistical graphs in Python. And this builds on the top of matplotlib and integrates closely with Pandas data structure. And this shows us the distribution of UI in NYC building data set and the distribution of UI of NYC building in the data set for uh, KBTU per square feet with the outliers removed. 
and uh, this is also another distribution for the GAG emission. And here uh, we have clustered all the um, all the lead certified buildings with platinum, gold, and silver certification. And here we can see that essentially office buildings are um, office buildings tend uh, tend to be uh, a lot more certified than the other building types. Uh, that is the main information we get from this. And here is uh, the lead certification level for each one of them. The average points earned as a percentage of the total points available of each lead scorecard category for all the lead certified buildings. And this was done using matplotlib. And then we move on to the approximate location of the lead certified buildings in New York City. And uh, this was based uh, on the zip codes using the folium library. And um, this was actually uh, done using the volume library, JSON and web browser. Uh, this was uh, done for creating this heat map. This is a special library for geospatial data, essentially. And here is the code that I have used for this. Uh, the first one is a uh, function that essentially creates the data frame using the zip codes of the building. And from here, I can uh, see the frequency for each zip codes, uh, how many times it appears. And the second one, which is the creating map um, a function. And this one takes the arguments for the building location, um, the essentially tie, uh, tiles, uh, what sort of tiles it will be, what sort of fill color it will have, etc. And that's how that heat map was created. And then for the first objective, uh, which is essentially finding the correlation between the lead score and building's energy attributes, um, I have done two types of correlation studies here, the Pearson and the Spearman. And um, the code samples are given at the bottom there. For this one, essentially, um, the objective used uh, the lead certified buildings data set with 503 data points. These methods um, depended on certain assumption that the data should be numeric, continuous, distribution of the data should be normal, and a linear relationship will exist between the attributes. The Seaborn Data Visualization Library was used for this objective, as you can see. And in the figures, the correlation coefficient for each method can be seen example. Um, unlike what is expected of lead, lead energy credit, this has a very co uh, low correlation with the energy uses of the building. So uh, whether the building has lead certification or not, it does not have any uh, very vast correlation with uh, the actual energy consumption it has. Uh, however, there is a correlation between the energy star score and the GAG emission, but this was expected. So essentially, not all of our expectations are coming true from these uh, two correlation, correlation studies that we have performed. So the objective uh, two, it compares the lead certified buildings in terms of energy and GAG savings and compare them to non lead certified buildings with similar attributes. Uh, here I can see that uh, the lead and non lead uh, certified buildings, they uh, don't differ that much when it comes to like family housing or cattle school but for let's say educational facilities big educational facilities like college or office there is a big jump that that is what we can see and for total jg emission it actually um, seems that sometimes uh, they're very close uh, the difference is not actually that high as high as we have hoped it to be so um, this was done using the 23,000 non-lead data points and the 500 something lead data points. And um, the first two graphs, uh, this is essentially shows if, if I try to uh, consolidate this, uh, the comparison of lead and non-lead buildings in UI and GAG emission distributed in these sectors, family housing, uh, college, financial office, K-12 schools, mixed use property and retail store. Uh, these are the main um, maximum building types that are within that building category that is selected from the open data. And it contradicts the statement essentially that was made by USGBC that uh, lead will reduce up to 34% uh, of the GAG emission and the 25% of energy consumption. None of the lead buildings uh, essentially lived up to the claim from this study that you performed here. And uh, next, I'll show you one more graph for uh, platinum versus gold versus silver, UI and JG emission. These are the three types of certification, platinum being the best building type there is, and silver being not as good as gold or platinum. But as you can see here, the silver actually performs 
kind of much better than the gold and the platinum which is um, odd this was not supposed to happen but that's what our data plan showed us so um, in conclusion given the result of this objective 2 uh, we can acknowledge that the level of certification has little impact on energy and the GHG share saving for the building data that we have used in this study so then we moved on to objective three, which is analyzing the impact of LEED score as an attribute to predict the energy use intensity, UI, for LEED certified buildings. And here is a simplified uh, methodology for this particular uh, training and testing. Um, the predictor attributes that I have used are mentioned below with the target attributes. And the data point is 503, which is not a lot, lot, but that's what we had. So that's what I had to work with, essentially. So uh, the algorithms that I have chose are multilinear regression, support vector regression, and random forest regression from the scikit-learn machine learning library. And they were used um, to train and to predict UI for lead certified buildings with and without using their achieved lead score attribute. This objective used the LEED certified buildings with 503 data points, as I mentioned. The regression algorithms were selected since the target variable in this objective is numerical. Multilinear and support vector regression are two of the most popular regression algorithms for numerical prediction, while random forest regression is an ensemble method that is a low variance predictor. Before training the models, the correlated features from the and the outliers were removed from the datasets. So here are all the libraries that I have used. Uh, this is the code for um, all of them. So I just thought that it will give a uh, thorough idea. And uh, the scoring um, evaluations I have used are MSC, MAE, and R2. And here are uh, here is the sample code for linear regression and uh, support vector regression and random forest regressor that I have used. And this is the result for uh, this code. And here we can see that the random, random forest regressor performed um, a bit better than the other two. Not really acceptable, but uh, I don't think uh, there was much I could do about that since the data point numbers were kind of low. Uh, so here is the one using only building attributes. If we, if we see that um, using the building attributes, only building attributes, and using all attributes plus the lead score, do not change the result that much. So for this particular 500 data point um, data frame, actually, using lead score as a predictor attribute is not having that much of an impact on the study. So um, this is why you can seriously question then what, then what good is it for? Uh, can, can we use it to uh, do some analysis before we design the building? No. Uh, is it like doing something that a non lead certified building is not doing? No, also no. So then we move on to objective four. We have not um, lost hope. We are moving on and we are trying to see whether this is a fluke or I can actually make this result better than it is. And as part of the fourth objective, multilinear regression was trained to predict the lead score and non-lead buildings. The lead certified building data set had 503 data points and the non-lead had 23,000 data points. And before training the models, correlated features and outliers were obviously removed. And um, in order to apply the, machine, uh, the multiple linear regression to the data set, um, scikit-learn, the pre-processing processing module was used to normalize the predictors, and then the whole data set was split into training and test. And obviously, um, uh, scikit-learn model selection module was applied, and after that, um, when uh, we evaluate errors, some graphs and metrics were operated like RMSC, r square, MAPE, and residual. Due to the nature of this project, uh, the use of feature selection method was not applicable because here uh, using PCA was actually not helping the result in any way, but using the domain knowledge proved to be much more useful. That's why I have uh, discarded using PCA before applying any of the machine learning models. As the table shows, neither the result were, it can be considered acceptable, essentially. Uh, and the lead score is built on top of many different criteria, such as innovation, transportation, 
those attributes were not available on our data set for some reason they give out these uh, scores and they say that they have all these um, data points on their website but when you actually try to sort out the data you cannot automatically do it that efficiently so that is one of the biggest limitations we have here and the second reason why this is not that much of an acceptable result is um, the rates distribution. Our training set for this objective was significantly smaller than our test set, significantly, which has obviously impacted these results. Objective five, this is my last objective, and this trains a predictive model to predict the EUI when the model is trained on the complete building data set, and we analyze the impact of the lead score on the predictive performance. Again, there is a simplified version of the uh, methodology for this train and test uh, process. Uh, we compare the building's uh, data points with all attributes plus lead score and using only the building attributes. And at the last, we compare the both result and we see whether adding the lead score eventually had an effect or not. For the smaller data set, we saw that it did not have any effect. Let's see what happens for the bigger data set. Now we have 28,000 data points in this data frame. Let's see what happens. Uh, Okay, here actually we have added the NN uh, multi-layer perceptron uh, because now our data points are a lot more. For 500 using um, artificial neural network would have been pointless or some, would ha some of you could have questioned like why or was this even done? But here I, I can think, I, I thought that we can at least try and see and check what happens, right? So... Uh, for the ANN, um, the model was fine-tuned with a single hidden layer with 100 neurons and the max iteration of 500. Here is the sample code for this one, and you can see that uh, the max iteration and hidden layer sizes are mentioned there. Okay, so here are the results. For this result, um, actually, we can see that ANN, um, the multilayer perceptron, is actually performing a little bit better than the other regressors that we have, but not a lot, just a little bit. But it actually did a lot better than the smaller data set. I think it only happened because of the size of the data set. That was the only difference that we had here, nothing more, because as you can see, um, this is the result for the all attribute plus lead score. The next page will show only using the building attributes the results do not change that much for any of the regressors. So using the lead score as a predictor attribute did not really change the result as much as we have hoped to. Using it or not using it um, for however many careful variation, it did not have an effect. So now we have moved on to our discussion. For each of the regressor models, uh, the performance matrices, uh, the mean error, mean absolute error, mean squared error, and the R square were evaluated across 10 fold cross validation, and their mean values were reported. The average matrices for different depths of random forest regressor were tested, and it was observed that the error was uh, minimum for the depth of five. Okay and random forest remains the most accurate algorithm for predicting the UI, but um, for predicting the UI uh, when we had like a lot of data points, ANN came a lot closer, but uh, if someone asked just for my opinion which one worked better for this one, for both data set, random forest was significantly better than the other ones, I'll say. And then uh, just if we take a look at uh, the results here, based on the results in this study, it is possible to assert that simply achieving a lead score does not promise any energy and GHG savings as the USGBC claims. But this is just one data set and not even that complete. So I will not say this is a definitive study to pass a comment on that. And it was also observed that the higher level of lead certification did not show any significantly higher energy or GHG savings as advertised. And furthermore, because of the lead score prediction, if only considering the energy-related attributes were chosen for this case, many non-lead buildings would have also achieved the lead certification. So there was not any um, big physical difference that we had. The only difference, some building applied for it, some buildings did not apply for it. That was the only difference. That's what the data shows. 
So the limitation, obviously, we had a very small data set uh, that was a big problem and that will keep, uh, keep uh, that will remain a big problem until USGBC becomes more open and more transparent with their data. And the accuracy of the data, uh, the scraper could not scrape like a lot of them and it, it was a lot of problem like getting the lead building data. The variation of certification versions, uh, broke down scores varied uh, numbers of point and categories and for recommendation I'll say that the data on operation practices schedules equipments and construction uh, changes can be collected from LEED certified buildings for improved accuracy so that's essentially the findings here is that LEED is not uh, the solve all um, thing that uh, is promised to be we still need to find uh, what can be a better solution uh, or can be a more universal solution and that's what my findings are. So that is all. Thank you so much for listening to this. And uh, if you have any questions, I will hear them now. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, at thank this you. point, doesn't look like we have any questions from the audience. So uh, thank you very much for, for coming. Um, I just have a couple of announcements after the talk. Uh, so first of all, everyone, please give a big round of applause to the speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sponsors have their own booths, which we encourage you to visit after the talk. All participants who have purchased tickets can also participate in the sticker rally at the sponsors' booths. And if you collect the specified number of stickers, you can exchange them for a limited edition t-shirt. We look forward to your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you.